Good morning. We welcome all parishioners and visitors as we prepare to celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Our celebrant today is Father Rico. Please stand and join in our processional hymn. Churches born, the spirit is a blowing on a world reborn. The spirit is a moving all over, all over this land. The spirit is a moving all over, all over this land. Filled with the spirit, we are sent. We are called all together, we are called to work. The Spirit is a moving all over, all over this land. The Spirit is a moving all over, all over this land. The Spirit fills us all with power. As witnesses to all we need. The Spirit is a moving all over, all over this land. The Spirit is a moving all over, all over this land. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we celebrate the birthday of the church, this great feast of Pentecost, as we give honor and praise to God, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Blessed Trinity, who comes to us in a special way as we renew the face of the earth. At this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of Tony Passero and Ilio Coletta, Angela and Emmanuel Kaleha, and Thomas Chirkoff. For the times we fail to recognize the Spirit of God's presence in our midst, we bow our heads and ask for his mercy, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those who are in darkness. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church and every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of all believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like the rushing of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound of the crowd gathered and, it was, and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all who speak, are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. The word of the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the Send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are great. How manifold are your works, O Lord, the earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away the breath, O Lord, I return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they live. You renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same Lord who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though are many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one Spirit. The word of the Lord. the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been from me from the beginning. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Today we say happy birthday to Mother Church. For it is in this feast of Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit that we give honor and praise to God, God the Holy Spirit, who comes anew, who brings us his peace, who fills us with his gifts and his fruits and helps us to grow in holiness as one day we will return to him both body and soul. Pentecost has a very special place in my heart. This was the first Mass I celebrated. In two weeks, it'll be 10 years as a priest. I purposely picked this feast because I think the Holy Spirit often gets a bad rap in the sense that he doesn't get the same glory as the Father, the creator of the universe, 
Jesus, the Messiah, gets, the Holy Spirit often is forgotten. Why? I'm not quite sure. But he's just as important as the third person of the Blessed Trinity. In our own church, when I was like Johander here back in 2008, I remember approaching Monsignor Vladimir, God rest his soul, and I said, Monsignor, those windows above the doors, why don't we make them into stained glass? Yeah, yeah, Rico, it's on the list, it's on the list. I said, no, no, don't tell me it's on the list. I said, like, seriously, there are no images of the Holy Spirit in this church. Yes, there is. I said, well, Monsignor, it's when, you know, we put the banner up. I said, yeah, the banner on Pentecost, <laughs> right? And he said, actually, you're right. And then Father Ed turned to me and said, Rico's right. We should look into this, Vlad, right? So Father Ed said, yeah, Rico, good idea. I said, well, I think it came from the Holy Spirit. I mean, I'm just a seminarian. I'm not telling you what to do. He's a monsignor, you're a priest. It's a good idea, Rico, it's a good idea. And so these stained glass windows here in the church, make sure you look at them. Now would be great, right? Right above the windows. For you at home, when you come back to the church, which should be like now, okay? Look at those windows because notice where they are placed. It is the Spirit of God that sends us forth. They're not here. They're there because so beautifully done by one of our parishioners who doesn't like when we give her honor. You know who you are. I know who you are. You're fantastic. Thank you for your artistic work. But as they were commissioned, what a beautiful reminder that just as the Holy Spirit sent John the Baptist out into mission, just as the Holy Spirit sent Jesus into the desert before he was sent on his mission, the same Holy Spirit that came upon Mary and the apostles in the upper room is the same Holy Spirit that commissions you and I to go on mission, to do what God is asking us to do, a mission that was created just for you. He didn't want St. Peter to do it. He didn't want the other apostles to do it. He wants you to do it. And he's given you the same gifts and fruits of the Spirit that Mary and the apostles received at Pentecost as we heard Jackie proclaim in our first reading. But for many of us, when's the last time we focused on the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit? The day of my own confirmation? For me, that was 25 years ago. <laughs> for you, probably a little bit less, a little bit more. Or when your son or daughter went through confirmation preparation? Maybe that was this year, maybe that was many years ago. No, we need to really focus on the gifts and fruits of the Spirit. So guess what? Let's spend the time right now. First of all, how many of us even know what the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit are? The seven gifts of the Spirit help us to shape our lives, to grow in holiness, to live a life that is pleasing to God. The gift of wisdom helps us to see our joys and sufferings in the light of God's kingdom. Wisdom helps us to be wise as Solomon was in the Old Testament, to be able to make decisions that are God-like, not human-like. By receiving and using the gift of wisdom, we are able to decide, to speak, to think, to act, and pray like Christ. We take on the name Christians. The gift of wisdom helps us to be Christ-like. In the book of Job, chapter 28, verse 17, it says, Gold and glass cannot equal wisdom nor can it be exchanged for jewels or vessels of fine gold. What a powerful passage, speaking of the wisdom of God. The second gift, the gift of understanding. How can we come to understand God? God doesn't leave us stranded. He gives us his love letter found in the sacred scriptures where God's continual work is done. If we want to come to understand God's plan for the world, this gift of the Holy Spirit helps us to do just that. When we understand a situation as Christ calls us to, we think from the goodness of our heart 
It is the Holy Spirit who touches us to do something, to understand that this is part of God's plan. As I mentioned earlier, in fulfilling our own vocation as a single person, a married person, a priest, wherever we find ourselves in our call, the gift of understanding gives us the ability to understand how God works, to be able to see miracles, to see verses of sacred scripture that come alive in my life, to see the signs of God that he places that sometimes are not so obvious to others. But the mysteries of our faith help us that if I use the gift of understanding, ah, God's all over it. The third gift the, of right judgment and counsel. This is where we call upon the power of God to give us counsel, to help us to make right decisions that help us towards the day of final judgment. Is this a decision that is going to impede eternity for me? Then I shouldn't follow through with it. Right judgment or counsel helps us to constantly choose good over evil, no matter how hard that is. Over the six years and many homilies, I've shared images that we grew up with, right? Pinocchio, he had his influence. Fred Flintstone had his influence. Well, our influence is not a cartoon or an image, but rather it is the third person of the Holy Trinity who calls us to make decisions to do right, not to be right, and to make decisions that also benefit the Lord. From Judges chapter 18, verse 5, it says, And they said unto him, Ask counsel. We pray to you, O God, that we may know whether our way shall be prosperous. The fourth gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of courage or fortitude. This gift allows us to face danger, to overcome fear with confidence. How many of us are so afraid of the world? Perfect example right now, the pandemic. How many people are afraid to do anything? God doesn't want us to be afraid. He also calls us to be prudent. I can't wait for my second vaccination. I've told you and spoken of what Bishop Burgi has said. As good Catholics, as Pope Francis reminds us, we have an obligation to maintain safety for self and the good of others. But to be like the apostles in the upper room, they're stuck. They need the Holy Spirit to open their eyes. How many of us need the Holy Spirit to open our eyes to see where our true strength comes from? And that is from God. Not from the government, not from a vaccination, not from anyone else, but God himself. And God does not want us to live in fear. So the gift of courage helps us to understand, to extend that God gives us strength to be able to overcome, to use words, deeds, and actions. We are fortified by the Holy Spirit. We are protected. That's what the Eucharist does for us, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes physically, but more important, spiritually, that it conforms our very being to the heart of Jesus. And it helps us to fight against evil and temptation. The devil wants us to be afraid. The more we are paralyzed by overanalysis, the less we fulfill the mission that God the Holy Spirit calls us to. In Romans chapter 5, verse 4, it says, Fortitude develops maturity of character, and character of this sort produces joyful and confident hope for eternal salvation. You can see this is going to be a homily that you play back over and over because there's so much inside it. I want us to focus on this. We need to grow in our faith. This is the time to grow, my brothers and sisters. The next gift, gift five, the gift of knowledge. Knowledge is not just knowing things, but most importantly, it's to come to know who Jesus is. And the more I come to know who Jesus is, the more I can discern things that are important in life and things that aren't. 
Have you ever heard the phrase, is this a battle or a war? For some people, everything is a war. For God, many things are battles. Few things are wars. And the biggest war is the war between good and evil. How the devil continues to try to attack us, my friends. And that's why through the seven sacraments, it is the Holy Spirit who shields us, who gives us God's grace. And so this knowledge of him allows us to freely make decisions and choices, trusting that God is with us. Just as Jesus, throughout his life and after his resurrection, continued to appear and to be present. It is the same Jesus in today's gospel who promises to send us the advocate, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, who comes to us and helps us. Using the gift of knowledge, we need not be reminded that God is constantly working within us, but we know that he is, and we acknowledge that. From the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 35, it says, To you it was shown that you might realize and have personal knowledge that the Lord is God. There is no other besides him. If we believe this to be true, and Jesus says, I am with you until the end of time, we heard that last week at the Ascension, then we are reminded that God is with us, the gift of knowledge. Gift number six, reverence and piety. This gift places us at the base of the cross. Here we focus on the deep, intimate, beautiful relationship between the Savior and those who are saved, us, his children, who are sinners. As we focus on this deep relationship, we are to act within the light of this reality, which means if I truly believe that Jesus has died to redeem me, then I must live a life of reverence. I must recognize my place and I must give honor and praise to God that he would think enough of me to die for me. The gift of reverence or piety strengthens our resolve to be a more pious Christian. The gift of piety strengthens our souls and helps us to be a stronger individual. From the first letter to Timothy, chapter 2, verse 2. It says, for kings and all who are in authority, a quiet and peaceable life we may all lead in piety and gravity. No matter how important or unimportant we think we are, all of us are God's children. Let's let God be God and let us be us as we trust in a compassionate, merciful, and loving God. The last gift of the Holy Spirit is one that often causes confusion because of the limitations of the English language. The seventh gift is fear of the Lord. By no means does this or should this have a negative connotation. Being afraid of God is never something that God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit want us to be. In fact, it's quite the opposite, that Jesus says, our Father, Abba, that intimate call of daddy. That's what we are saying when we pray the Lord's Prayer. Fear of the Lord speaks of wonder and awe of God. God, you are so amazing. Everything I have comes from you. You think enough of me to even allow me to wake up today. Lord, you think enough of us to give us the beautiful sunrise, the gift of the four seasons, though we often complain about winter. So many ways God transforms us. He's going to give us the Eucharist in a few moments. He allows us to live in this beautiful country that we complain about the government. But we don't realize how blessed we are. Wonder and awe of the Lord who thinks enough of you that he enters into dialogue with you. Using this gift helps us to recognize the very blessings of God in my daily life. 
Again, we should never be afraid. This is not about God's wrath, my brothers and sisters. Rather, it's this intimate union that God has with us. That as we give him honor and praise, he is the source of our lives. May our lives, by their very witness, experience the glory of God. Every child is a miracle and a reminder to us that God is alive and present in our world. The fear of the Lord should never have a negative connotation, but rather a positive one. Then we have the 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit. These fruits give us special graces to live out our life. The first is charity or love. It encompasses God's love for us and, please God, our love for him. This helps us to make daily decisions that inspire us to be God-like. This unconditional love of God for us, God expects nothing in return. Do I exhibit love in my daily life, or do I only show love to those who should love me, or love for other because I expect something in return? The second fruit, joy. Often we associate joy and happiness together. Joy and happiness are very different. Being happy is emotion. Being joyful is an experience. It's a way of life. It's this lasting happiness that only God can give. It's the joy of the risen Jesus. It's the experience of the risen Christ. It's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in us. It's to realize that if God is at the center of my life, no matter if the Maple Leafs lose, no matter if I become unemployed, no matter if my spouse leaves me, no matter if I lose a loved one earlier than I would expect, this joy that Jesus understands what I'm going through and that joy that God gives, sickness, death, pain, dysfunction, nothing can take it away. This is a fruit of the Holy Spirit that is so vital for us to tap into. The third fruit of the Spirit is the fruit of peace, the peace that only God can give. Jesus, throughout the scriptures, especially after his resurrection, appears to the disciples and to all of us and says, peace be with you. This is the inner peace that only can come to us from God. This is the peace of recognizing that God has our best interest in mind, that my needs and yours are being met by a gracious God, not what I necessarily want. Lotto 649. Lord, this would be fantastic. I want to be at peace. Give me the lottery. Hey, I hope he does that for you. I don't even buy tickets because I think it's a waste of time. But that peace that I received when my father died after the first shock, Lord, you are going to see us through. Only you can give me that peace. Father Rico, how did you celebrate that funeral mass? The peace of the Holy Spirit. That's not pious talk, friends. I assure you, this peace is something that we need to tap into. The fourth fruit is patience. Mother Teresa says, I have never met somebody who was too patient. I can affirm you this is true in my life too. Oh, Joey's too patient. It actually aggravates me. Never, never. Joey could use a little more patience. So could Father Rico. So could you. Patience is not just this idea of, okay, I'm going to let it go. Let go and let God. That's kumbaya stuff. Patience talks about true compassion for the other person. Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. This is true compassion and patience. This helps us to once again tap into God's unconditional love for us and that we are to share it with others. The fifth fruit, kindness. Kindness is not just doing good things for others. Tim Hortons, hold the door. Good morning. That's great. Let's go deeper. Kindness talks about being compassionate to somebody. 
to giving them not only my time, that in my mind I think, oh my gosh, when are they going to stop talking? I would like to do something else. But to start to realize, this is my brother or sister. What can I do to ease their burden? I want to do acts of kindness that truly make me like Christ, that goes beyond what we owe them and what they might owe us. The sixth fruit, goodness. Goodness is not, I'm a good person. Again, that's kumbaya theology. Delete it from your vocabulary. This has to do with finding the path of righteousness. I want to be holy. I want to strive to do God's will, even at the expense of earthly things. The way I conduct my business, even if it's legal, is it moral? Do I truly care about my customers, or am I just looking to make a buck? The fruit of goodness. The seventh fruit, forbearance. Forbearance talks about what do I do when I'm being provoked? The Holy Spirit challenges us at times, like Job was challenged. The evil one continues to provoke people in the church and outside the church. How do we tolerate others? Do we just put up with them? Or does forbearance help us to see the bigger picture? To remain steadfast? I am going to be godlike. I will bite my tongue in this moment. I am not going to be provoked to move into sin. The gift of forbearance, excuse me, the fruit of forbearance. The next fruit, mildness. To be mild in behavior is not just for people who are timid or you introverts out there. Us extroverts can also be mild. It means again, speaking from meekness, following humility. How do I act in the presence of others? Again, not just when things go my way. Do I quickly move to revenge? Or do I look for opportunities to truly let go and let God? The ninth fruit of the Holy Spirit is the fruit of faith. Faith is the core of Christianity. We must believe that this is not just a thing. Sometimes my friends say, I'm not asking you to be a priest right now. I just want you to be my friend. Well, if I'm truly a disciple of Jesus, I don't ever stop being not only a priest, but a follower of Jesus. Are the words that come from my mouth geared in my faith? Or do I take my faith hat off when it's convenient for me? Do I truly believe that God is the master of my life and the one who wants to transform me? The tenth fruit, modesty. Modesty talks about not just in our dress, but in our conduct. Does my character suggest that I am humble? Do I recognize that every success Every gift that I have, every character trait that others may be envious of, comes to me not because Rico's fantastic, but rather that God has blessed me. And that everything that I have comes from God. Everything that I am is a gift from God. Are we modest and give honor and praise to God for everything that I am and everything that I have? rather than harboring selfish ambition. The eleventh fruit, countenance. Continence is having temperance, or it's also called self-control. Am I able to do things to the extreme, or do I do things in balance or moderation? For many people, we associate that with eating and overeating. This is a problem for some. What also is a problem for some are things that lead us to addiction. Self-control is where I invite God to assist me in becoming more balanced. Am I quick to anger all the time? Or does God help me to control myself 
that in my emotions I'm not like a volcano, but rather that I think before I speak. And the last fruit of the Holy Spirit is the fruit of chastity. How important, especially in our culture, is this necessary for us to reflect upon, not merely to our young, but all of us. As priests, I am called to chastity. You married people are called to be chaste outside of your relationship with your spouse. And all others who are not married are called to chastity as well. Whether they are heterosexual or homosexual, all of us are called to live chastity. And this chaste lifestyle is a daily choice that we see our bodies not merely as something to be lusted over or to use for self-gratification or pleasure, but rather that my body and yours is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And the more I show reverence to that temple, the more I use my sexuality, which is not just the sexual act, but rather it is an experience of the risen Christ that by leading a chaste life, I offer my pure heart to God. Friends, this is what Pentecost is all about. As Bishop Burgi reminds us that the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit are not to be stored on some spiritual shelf to look at, like fine china behind the glass. I own this set of great value. Big deal if you don't use it, right? These gifts and fruits are to be taken, understood, and used. So as we celebrate Pentecost and we ask the Holy Spirit to renew our hearts in a very profound way, I want you to listen to some of the teachings that I've given you. Better yet, go online and go deeper. Choose one of the fruits of the Spirit. Choose one of the gifts of the Spirit to commit yourself to and say, I need to really work on this aspect of my life. That's where the Holy Spirit will come alive for us. That's where we will grow in holiness. So as the Gospel acclamation said, this beautiful prayer and traditional prayer of our church, let's ask the Holy Spirit to come upon us. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. So we stand together and proudly profess our faith in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We do so with great joy as we proclaim the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray that we may cooperate with the work of the Holy Spirit, who sends us on mission, so that he may renew us as thoroughly as spring renews the face of the earth.
Our response? The Spirit of the Living God fall fresh upon us. Spirit, Spirit of, of the, the Living God, God fall afresh upon, upon us. For the Church, that the Holy Spirit may inspire and guide in its mission to witness to Christ and preach the Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Spirit, Spirit of, of the, the Living God, God fall afresh, afresh upon us. For the whole world, that the Holy Spirit may bind human family in ties of love and friendship. Let us pray to the Lord. Spirit, Spirit of, of the, the living God, God fall afresh, afresh upon us. For all those who are imprisoned by fear, doubt, loneliness, depression, or habits of sin, that the Holy Spirit may set them free. Let us pray to the Lord. Spirit, Spirit of, of the, the living God, God fall afresh, afresh upon, upon us. In this year of celebrating the 175th anniversary of our Cathedral Church, for all past rectors of our Cathedral and our current rector, that our loving God reward and bless them for their faithful service. As a diocesan family, we pray to the Lord. Spirit, Spirit of, of the, the living God, God fall afresh upon us. We pray for those who are sick, either mentally or physically, especially Una Dillon, Fernando Cardoso, Liam Need, Leon Blachette, Giselle Hamilton, Francis and Jenny Bozzo, Tony Petrovich, Matteo DeFalco, Mel Miller, Jen Marinelli, Christoph Nagash, Anna Wilcox, the Lowen family, Martino Malacho. May the Spirit bring them healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Spirit, Spirit of, of the, the living, living God, God fall, fall afresh upon, upon us. We pray for those who have died, especially Louise Minetti, Joe Galera, John Kennedy, Nadia Conti, Raymond Doust, Betty Dale, Stephen Madgan, Angela Valletta, Michael Wood, Janet Rusin, Quinter Gordon, that the Spirit may console them and give them hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Spirit, Spirit of, of the, the living God, God fall afresh, afresh upon us. At this Mass, we also pray for Tony Pissero, Ilya Coletta, Thomas Chirkop, and Angela and Emmanuel Kaleja. Let us pray to the Lord. Spirit, Spirit of, of the, the living God, God fall, fall afresh, afresh upon, upon us. us. And for the intentions we verbalize to God from the silence of our hearts, Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit renewed Mary and the Apostles and launched the Church. Help us to experience His presence in us and among us. May we tap into the fruits and gifts of the Spirit given to us at Confirmation so that we may fulfill the mission You have given to each of us to live holy lives that are pleasing to You. We ask these and all things through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of the sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one true faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with all the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. At this Mass, we use Eucharistic prayer number one. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially those for whom we now pray. And all who are gathered here physically and digitally, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appeared to Mary and the apostles in tongues of fire, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, with Saint Joseph, our husband, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the most body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
my Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. My Jesus mercy. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son and our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have died and gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. We remember especially Papa and Ilio, Angela and Emmanuel, the deceased members of this parish family, and all those we hold within our hearts. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, Catherine of Alexandria, John Paul II, Teresa of Calcutta, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them and fill them with life. You bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of Christ, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. 
turn and offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free us by this your most holy body and blood, from all our sins and from all that is evil. Keep us faithful to your commandments, and never let us be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those at home receiving Jesus in a spiritual communion, I invite you to pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself holy to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be over presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is welcome. Let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us turn to our Blessed Mother as we pray. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Good Saint Joseph, ever watchful guardian of the Holy Family, protect the chosen people of Jesus Christ. Keep us free from the blight of error and corruption, and be our ally in the conflict with the powers of darkness. As of old, you rescued the child Jesus from the plots of Herod. So now defend the universal church from all harm. Keep us one and all under your continual protection, so that by your help and example, we may lead a holy life, die a happy death, and come to possess eternal life in heaven. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who is pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing, and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. May God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues 
in the profession of the one true faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing make you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Friends, a few announcements. Number one, my weekly update, thanks to Andrew Natali, who's so awesome, has developed the update now with a beautiful format. If you don't receive the weekly email, friends, now's the time, because the government has announced that these nine-person masses are not going away. So the only way that you're going to continue to be uh, involved through the summer and to know what's going on is in my weekly update, which is amazing now with this new format that Andrew has developed. So if you are not currently getting it on Fridays from the parish, please contact the parish through the website and send us an email. Don't send it to me. Send it to the parish itself, and Tracy will add you into our database so that way you can be involved. What does this also mean? So our nine-person masses are going to be here for the summer. Friends, on our huge church, only nine people and Father Rico can worship. This is the safest place in all of Canada to be. If you have not received the Eucharist for a while, friends, I am pleading with you. Father Bill and I are committed. We will celebrate as many more Masses as we need. It's the same people who are registering for Mass every week. They don't necessarily have to receive Mass every week. I want everyone in our parish to be receiving on a regular basis, especially those of you who have not received Jesus for a long time. It is so vital that we take the chapter in John where Jesus says that we need to have the Eucharist to be alive. In this huge church, friends, I assure you, come once, those of you who are nervous, just come once. If you don't like it, don't come back. I can promise you, you will be here. Okay, just this week, we had a few more people. Father, if I knew this, I would have been here a long time ago. I think Father Rico and Father Bill have been telling us this for months, but that's okay. My job is not to be your friend. My job is to bring you to Jesus, and I want you to receive sacramental communion. Father Bill and I are committed for the rest of the summer until the government allows us back at 15%, which is going to be late August, they're saying. And I'm not even holding my breath on that anymore. We have to move forward as a parish. I am committed to bringing you to Jesus Christ. We have the weekly sign-ups every Friday. I am pleading with each of you to bring yourselves and your families to the Eucharistic table of Jesus. Sacramental communion is okay. S sorry, S is it fantastic? I meant to say spiritual communion is okay. Sacramental communion is vital. This is very, very, very important. Why am I beating a dead horse? Because it's important. So I encourage you to sign up for Mass and open your heart to Jesus. There are openings for this week ahead. Rather than the same people signing up every Sunday, I am pleading to all of you to make Mass a priority. And I can guarantee you, you will be safe. I have not heard in over a year and a half now of anyone getting coronavirus by coming to Mass. I have not heard it anywhere. Why? Because we as the Catholic Church are abiding by it, and more importantly by the rules, it is Christ who is protecting us, so we have nothing to worry about. I leave that with you as you take it to prayer. My job is to lead you to water. Your job is to drink. Do so as you come to be fed by the Lord. There are lots of things going on in, in, the, in the parish and throughout our diocese. The one that I want to make mention is to all of you who participated in yesterday's wine uh, fundraiser by our Knights of Columbus. So I thank all of you who purchased for that. The wine was to be picked up. If you did not yet pick yours up, there are a few that are still here. The parish staff will uh, make arrangements with you. Call the office and I will do a curbside pickup for you. Let us join in our recessional hymn as we give honor and praise to God the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come with your fire, Holy Spirit, come with your fire, Holy Spirit, come with your fire, Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Spirit, Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit set my life on fire. Holy Spirit set my life on fire.